So without any further ado, let me go ahead and hand it over to you, Erica. Thank you, Brandon. Hello, guys. So um, and uh, just a quick introduction about myself. I'm Erica Alves. I am a Brazilian, but I, I'm based in Portugal and I report to Doro Red Quarter, which is in Canada. So I'm not a native English speaker. So sorry for any mistake. <laughs> and I, I'm going to I'm going to start to share my screen. That's it. So I'm going to talk about how we are using Quantrix at Doro and why I brought here the three main uses we are using now uh, and that we consider it's been very helpful and powerful for us at Doro Giovanaro. So first of all, uh, uh, I've met, I've never modeled before, and I've been using Quantrix for a year and a half. So that's been a very good experience. Uh, I was hired to implement Quantrix at Dora Juvenile, and the main purpose of Dora Juvenile decided to use Quantrix was to improve the level of financial data quality in terms of consolidation from their different Dora's markets all over the world. So this was one of our biggest challenge and I'm going to talk a bit about our background and our challenge here on the next slide. So uh, I don't know if everybody knows Dora Juvenile, but we, we are world leading juvenile products company and we we are well known. We are very known about our strong global brands, which is Mexicosi, Tiny Love and Safety First, for sure. You have heard about some of them before. You also have some regional brands such as Queenie, Costco, Baby Comfort, Infant, Mother Choice, Voyage. So we are 2,700 employees around the world. And that's it. That's our brands and that's how we are working to make a easier parents journey around the world. So uh, Dora, Ju Dora Juvenile is a company that has grown its worldwide presence throughout brand acquisitions. And uh, Dora Juvenile's operations are distributed in several different countries and regions. And each country operates with not only different languages and different currencies, but also with different systems. So we had fragmented sources of data, lack of transparency and visibility in accuracy at Dora juvenile level at the corporate level. So our goal of adopting Quantrix, uh, it was to improve the level of consolidated financial data in a more efficient way so we can take the decisions at the right time, the right moment with the correct and with the most feasible data we could have. So this is why we decided to use Quantrix for that consolidation, and this is our main challenge. So we, we I brought this map here where you can see that we have uh, operations in Australia, Brazil, Chile, Peru, all over the Europe, China, and we use now Quantrix to have that data consolidated for us. So and how we use Quantrix at Dario Juvenile? Uh, we basically build our models using Modeler, and then once the model is ready to go, we publish the model at the cloud, and then we share the model with different divisions. So I train them on how to do the input. Uh, we explain them what we want we want to see there, and then they do the input. And after that, we have all the data consolidated, so we can generate reports, analysis, and have the visibility of the data we want to. So we have a bunch of different models being used as of now, and all of them are being the inputs are being done by different regions, different countries using the cloud. So that's how we manage to use Quantrix and Dural. So this is the process we use. Uh, I brought here the three main Quantrix users at Toro Juvenile, and I am show you one of I brought three examples so you can see how we are using. And then I just bought at the end uh, the special new feature that's been very, very helpful for us. And I'm going to show you at the end. So uh, first of all, main 
main user usage is the collecting structure information all over the region. So we are using now Quantrix for collecting data for budget purpose, for cash flow projections, for sales, for measure sales progress during the month. So I, I brought here one specific model, uh, which is the cash flow projection to show you how we are doing this. So this is basically an example of our cash flow projection model. Uh, this model specifically it's just based on the input from division so it's not connected to any of our other systems so basically the divisions go and choose their own entity input their data and after having that data input by all divisions we have the core the segment the segment data consolidated and then we can generate any reports we want to we can check the cash burn the how are we going to disperse? How are we going to invest the, our cash? So th this is basically we use to consolidate all our data for cash flow projection, and then we can do any analysis we want to. So divisions go to the cloud, input their data by selecting their entities. We also have a canvas specific for the intercompany disbursement, which is very interesting because, as I have said before, we have different countries with different currencies, and we always ask them to do their input in local currencies, in their own local currencies. So here, uh, is the the canvas that we have for the intercompany disbursement. So if a company from USA has to do a, a payment for a company in Shanghai, as in the, exec, the example, they are going to input their data in US dollars and it will appear on their disbursement part, but it will go automatically to the intercompany receipts for the Shanghai company in their own local currency, which is RMB. So this is being done in the model. And, and then after all, all regions go into their, their, their data into the model, we can have a consolidated view uh, for us in any currency we want to. So we can generate a report uh, for a specific division in euros, in dollars, in any currency we want to. And also we can generate a view for the segment with the consolidated view in any currency we want to. So uh, this, this is one of most used way that we are using Quantrix at Dorel, which is collecting data, collecting structured data information for, for having our analysis and take decisions we need to. So and the second the second usage that we we are using at Dorel Juvenile is getting data from our data house, transforming that data, and then sending data again to the data warehouse. We have an automated data import and automated data push to, and I will show you how we are doing this. So I brought here an example of what we are doing with our flash weekly sales model. And the process is we get from our data warehouse the invoiced sales amount from each region. So we have here our ERP systems feeding our data warehouse, and then we have that data that is being sent to Quantrix. Once that data is in Quantrix, we ask divisions to go there and input to the remaining amount to be invoiced for that specific month. So we have the invoiced, we ask them to input the to be invoiced amount so we can have a view, a preview of the sales for that month. Then once we have that data, we do some comparisons with forecast, budget, prior year. We also do some translations, some current translations to US dollars to some division, because imagine with that we have uh, I can say that in Europe we have entities in some currencies and then the division which is in euro and then we have to translate all that data to euros and then to US dollars. So we do all this transformation in Quantrix. So whenever we have all these translations, all these analysis with forecasted budget and prior year data, we push that data again to our data warehouse. So Quantrix goes to our data warehouse, feeds any specific table there, and then we can generate any report we want to at the executives in Power BI.
so we can generate the Power BI dashboard of, uh, with the data that Quantrix feed out in our data warehouse. So I can show you here. I have a canvas view for this input process from division. So if I'm a, if I'm a person from Chile, um, I just go and enter Chile, and I, it will be done on my local currents, which is peso chilenos, and then this data, the total shipped to date data will come from our data warehouse automatically and then they have to aim to the to be shipped on the green on the, on the yellow boxes so we can have the total expected amount this amount will be compared with budget forecast and after this they can save the data they can ask for approval they can generate a report to save their records for their own purpose and once all divisions do this input we we just analyze the data and push the data to the data warehouse again. So I, I brought here uh, next that uh, scripting, which is very, very simple and, and easy scripting that we have. Uh, so we have a button for import that data with that scripting. So it goes automatically and get the data from our data warehouse. And then once we are done, we can push that data using that scripting. And then we have that data in our data warehouse and we are ready to send out any report we want to for the flash sales process. So this is a process that we run on a weekly basis and it's been very helpful for us. It replaced another another different ways that you used to do at Doro. So we are using Quantrix for this since the beginning of the year and it's it's working very well. And third, I, I brought here a model that we use for automation our allocations for budget purpose. So it's be it's also a very powerful um, way to do it in Quantrix and we are doing this I, I'm going to show you how we, how we do we are doing this um, we we have a model to we have a cost center that you have to get that cost their costs uh, you have to settle an amount of their cost for each of our division so we, we, the, their cost has to be absorbed by each division and we have to define a way to allocate that cost so we have in that model different ways of allocation to have a final allocation that they are going to use for budget purpose so uh, we have an allocation based on projects where they can just go and input the, the number of projects by each division so those are the divisions codes and then the number of projects and then we're going to have the allocated amount based on the number of projects then we also have an allocation based on purchase orders so they just have to input the number of purchase orders by division and then they can also overhide that location if it's if it's not the way they want to they can also overhide the location and have the location by purchase orders we can also we also allocate some departments costs based on roles and responsibilities based so based on each role how many time you're going to spend on each division so it's also uh, we also use this this way of allocation and also we have an allocation based on new product development. So the number of products being developed in those divisions are also being considered for allocating a specific cost for a specific department. So after having this full allocation structured here by department, we have a final allocation by each division. And then we get the cost of that cost center and we settle to each division how much you have to consider for that cost in your budget for next year. So this is a very powerful automation for allocation. We are using this for the second year now uh, and we used to have this done in Excel and now we are doing in Quantrix and I think it's it's improved a lot and it's working very well. And besides this, I brought the dollar roll name function 
and I'm going to show you how we are using this at Doro uh, because I, as I have said before, we have too many divisions, too many countries input data, inputting data at the same time. So even with the time zone differences, uh, sometimes I have USA, Mexico, Brazil, Chile and Peru doing input at the same time, the same model. Sometimes I can have 15 people using the model at the same time inputting data. So this could make us uh, some input. This could lead us to some input errors. And now with that dollar roll name function, I would say that my life is much easier. And that's why I brought here to show how you're doing this. So, um, first of all, what we have to do is we man, we we add the roles as much as we want to to create. So basically, what I do is create a role for a specific division. So I have Mexico, Canada, Australia, USA, Brazil, Chile, Peru. I have all these roles created here with the, their own perspectives. And then I create a matrix where I connect each role to one each to a specific division. So once I have that connection by role and division, I use that that filter, the dollar no name function filter in each canvas, in each matrix that I want them to input. So once I do this, uh, Mexico, for instance, Mexico is when Mexico entered the model, they are going to see their data already filtered by Mexico and they won't be able to see any data from USA. They won't be able to do they 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 it will avoid them to do input. So it it will be impossible now having a Mexico input data in USA or China input data for Europe. So it doesn't happen anymore. And and it's we, we used to have another ways to to avoid this, but now with that function our life is much easier. And I'm very glad that we have that function. And and that's that's why I brought the role, the dollar role name function here, because I think it's very, very important for us um, at Doro in order to collect the data very, very structured and avoiding any input errors. So that's it. Uh, I don't know, Brandon, if you if you have any questions, so just let me know. Awesome, great. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. Um, so yeah, there are some questions popping up and I guess I can start off with one of my own. Um, can you describe a little bit more about the allocation process in Quantrix and some of the benefits that you've seen from that? Yeah, you, we, we say that it, it's it's very automated. So uh, I would say that uh, once this is done, if you don't change the rules from one year to another, uh, I won't have to do many changes. So this year I just have to pull out the expenses data and the allocation. It's already there. It's already created. So this is one of our main advantages. I think that when it's done, we don't have to touch it a lot. It's working for any year, any budget we want to. Awesome. We have another one here it said amazing use case. Bravo, Erica. What is the single thing you like in your Quantrix solution most? I would say that the plural name is my 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 <laughs> the one I love most. But but I think the um, the solution that we we can manage different divisions, we can manage different currencies, we can work with different rates at the same time. So sometimes I have some models where I have the budget rates and the forecast rates and then the actual rates and then this is different all over the world so to each division, each entity. So the way we can deal with the, with all those matrix and then we can combine just to have to have the final view, to have the final number you want to, it's a more it's too much complex way. And then using Quantrix it it makes our lives easier for sure. Mm -hmm. And what would you say is the biggest advantage for Durrell using Quantrix? Uh, 
I would say that cost all is is one of that that advantages for sure. But also, uh, I have to say that one of the reasons that we have been using Quantrix, it's because it, it's in our hands, in our financial hands. So whenever we need something, oh, like we have we have a crisis here. We have to know the data we need to we we need to get on that division. So I just do a model in a day or in some um, uh, some hours, and then we can ask them to intend and have visibility of that data and we can take decisions. So we do not have to wait for someone building something to us. It's in, on our hands and this is very powerful. I would say that that's it's been it's very, very good and it's very important for the oil business. Awesome. We had another comment here saying great work. And then there's another question here. How long did it take to build most of these models, as in all of them? This is this is a question that Ian likes to ask me a lot. So. <laughs> uh, it depends on the model. So um, I, I'm 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 working only one year and a half. But I would say that when I started, I used to take some. It, it depends on the complexity of the model. I used to to take. If, it, if it's an easy model, I used to take one or two days just to, to make sure it, it, the data is correct and the connections are good, the formulas are working. But if it's a simple model, just take me an hour or two hours to do it right now. It depends on the complexity of the model. Great. And can you go into a little bit more detail on how Darrell decided to go with Quantrix? What made the decision for you? Sorry, can you say that again? I was trying to just to to read the chat data, so I lost. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Can you go into more detail on how Darrell decided to go with Quantrix? What helped you make that decision? Uh, unfortunately, I was not there. <laughs> it was already taken when I, I I was hired when they decided to use Quantrix. But this is, was based on the difficulty that they have on having consolidated data. So we have we have divisions that have an, an, an complex the ERP systems and some divisions that do not have any system. So we have different. Uh, sizes of divisions with different types of business also. So the, this was the main purpose, the, the main issue that we used to have. And, and that's why we we decided to use Quantrix to have to have uh, one consolidated view. So to help us to to take decisions. So um, yeah, I think Ian wrote something about the FX module. Uh, we 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 recently built an FX model, which is very very interesting, uh, where we are we are doing some as we had that local currency exposure between in, in all divisions. We are constantly worried about how how. How rates are changing to the to the war, do COVID, do do all, do all these things, and then we built an FX model where where they can go into their exposure in US dollars basically, and then we they can simulate different rates and worst case scenarios, best case scenarios, and then they can take a decision and see how this is going to impact their business. So this is also a very good tool for 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 us on this FX sensitivity model. Great. So we have a couple minutes left so we can get a couple more questions in. How many Durrell users total do you think interact with Quantrix either as users or via output reports? If we have, we have, yeah, yes, I have. I, I think we have around 40, 40 users interacting using the cloud. So, uh, using model, modeling, no, but using the clouds, we have around 40 users now because we're just using it for financial people. So, for now, it is. And how big is your team? Do you have others maintaining the models? Yeah, I have myself, and now I have another person. Just Luciano, I think he's he's also here, and he is also building models with me. So we are basically uh, just two of us. Great. Well, it looks like we. If anyone else has any other, oh, okay, we have some more coming in. 
What are Durrell's plans about Quantrix in the future? Do you have any things coming up that you might be using it for that might be different than what you're using it for now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We have some plans and maybe maybe for outside finance department, maybe for procurement, for some consolidated different types of data in different departments. So we're still working and start to thinking about this, but for sure we have some ideas outside finance department for using Pantrix. Great. And actually, we did have another one come in too. Any advice for helping new Quantrix modelers learn the tool because you learn so quickly? Uh, I, I would thank you. The, 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 I saw I saw too many YouTube videos from Rich Lopez <laughs> and thank you for this, Rich. And but but I also had some 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 experts that helped me a lot. I worked a bit with Stephen and with Taïr, and you were helping me a lot to learn more about Quantrix, but I, I think, and I would like to thank you for this, but the most useful way to do, to learn any tool, it's doing and working on this. So I think this is the best way of learning Quantrix and, or any other tool that you want to. So I learned, I learned it by doing and, and it, it worked. Awesome. OK, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. There are a lot of great comments coming in. This was an awesome presentation.